battling to keep my sanity. Say no more, say no more. I love you, but. Does perfect even mean? Is there even such a thing? Oh, can we switch up all the rules and imagine a utopia? Darling, I'm just so fed up with these expectations. They can weigh me down. My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my head. I wanna live inside the upside down. For a minute and pretend. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, whoa. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, whoa. And if I say you need enough, it gets ingrained in my head, and I start to see. Honey, I'm a perfect ten.
It's a tug of war Battling to keep my sanity Say no more, say no more I love you but I can't keep killing me I look at myself, I wonder why you Don't recognize who you traumatize me Now what do I do? Pick up the pieces and go Does perfect even mean? Is there even such a thing? Oh, ooh. can we switch up all the rules and imagine a utopia? Darling, I'm just so fed up with these expectations. They can weigh me down. My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my head. I'm gonna live inside the upside down. For a minute and pretend. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, whoa. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, whoa. And if I say you need Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Meta High School Esports League. My name is Ryan Hart, and I am joined by Adj for the second segment of tonight's League of Legends competition. We have a different lineup tonight. We have the Zero IQ versus the Hibiki FC Club. We, for the duration of the game, we'll be calling them the HFC, just so that way it rolls off the tongue a little bit better if you, uh, for a little bit of extra information. But to summarize as well, in the first segment, from the first segment we had tonight, we had Caring Bar High versus 
Balkum Hills High School, and the ultimate winner that came out on top was Caring Bar. So, well, congratulations and well done once again on that astounding victory that you claimed uh, on stream for us tonight. And I believe we are just getting uh, all champions, or should I say all players, are just getting ready to go into champion select. How are you feeling, Edge? I am feeling very excited for this game. It is a WA game. My, me, myself, being based in WA, I'm always excited to see what the local talent has to offer. And I, I've heard great things about these teams, and I'm very much so looking forward to watching them duke it out. I am feeling the exact same. Like, we're seeing two teams played off from the same state once again. I mean, early tonight, we saw two teams from New South Wales. Tonight, in this second segment, we're seeing two teams from Western Australia. So I'm really curious to see whether there's going to be a bit of a pattern showing, you know, that, like, New South Wales play in a different style as opposed to Western Australia. And, I like, it'll be interesting if there actually is a pattern showing because, like, it sort of comes to light and, like, gives people a better idea as to, like, you know, just because we're all on the same server does not mean we all have the same play style. I mean, we may all have different play styles uh, according to, you know, our locale and stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. And it's got to be the very finite differences, like a certain jungle pathing or ward placements that could be those very differences that you're talking about. Like some people should be able to land the Scar awards. Some people obviously can't. And that is true. That yeah. is true. And like one thing I have, I do manage to see a little bit absent quite often is that the team that does get put behind and is forced to sit inside their base, they don't really readjust their warding. So that way they have it on their side of the map, just outside of their wall, uh, just outside of their base wall line. So they can, they can see where the enemy roughly is. And a majority of the time that does actually equal their biggest downfall because they get caught out when they try to leave their own base and try and travel down lane or even try and travel through jungle when it comes to, you know, scouting out whether, whether they're going to be at Baron or whether they're going to be at Dragon, depending on the time frame uh, or the time lapse that we are when we're going into game. Yeah, no, and that is absolutely the key. Warding is completely underrated in the lower scene. It can be incredibly crucial to that early game matchup that can decide whether or not you can go for those mid-game objectives later on, especially with the jungle pressure. And we are getting into champion select now. We're going to have two bands coming out, Ari on the blue side, Silas on the red side, both pretty standard bands in all honesty coming out so far. Yes, and we're also seeing Lee Sin being banned away by Zero IQ. It looks like they're trying to get rid of some very early game scaling champions you know they once they get all three abilities they have become online for the team the only thing that sort of escalates them a little bit further as we travel into game or later into the game is they unlock their ultimates and they start getting items that give them a little bit more of a power spike yeah, and considering the nautilus. On, yeah nautilus band coming through now nautilus seeing a very good uh, step into the spotlight as of recently with a uh, change to his q i believe as well as the aftershock buff i uh, yeah i was it a buff? I thought it was a nerf as of recently. I believe the it was aftershock a buff. Yeah, I thought it was more of a nerf, but I guess I may be wrong. But you no, know, continuing. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, so the aftershock buff is uh, instead of going to a flat MR and armor bonus, they have now changed to be seventy plus your current armor and armor bonus, uh, fifty percent, I believe, as well as increasing the damage of the uh, burst that aftershock shields. Uh, making it deal 4% of your maximum health or maximum bonus health. Well, that's always interesting. That's always in an interesting enlightenment to, you know, to find out when coming through these patches, you know, what makes a buff, what makes a nerf, that type of scenario. And like continuing on, we've already locked away these bands. It looks like we've got a Lowy and Vayne uh, band away as our last two remaining champions. And it's interesting, Vayne has either got 100% pick rate or ban rate for what I've seen on stream. And honestly, playing her myself in just regular games, she come on she comes online for her team incredibly hard. Once she hits level six and gets like at least the Blade of the Ruined King power spike, and it just goes overboard when she gets Quinsu's Rage Blade. Yeah, no, Vayne is absolutely one of those hyper carry champions that is uh, choose it or lose it. And in this instance, they've chosen to lose it for both teams by just taking out of the game completely. We're gonna have Irelia picked up first on the blue side. A uh, bit of a flex pick, could go top side or mid side, so it's not too bad of a first pick. But Jarvan followed up on the red side, that's going to be more than likely in the jungle, and we're going to have the second pick coming through very soon. Yeah, so they're just having a little bit of a decider to see, you know, what would work well with their team comp. Jarvan 4 picked up immediately by Exir is interesting. It's 
almost like a common pick. Like, you know, he's available. Let's pick him straight away. Same with Aurelia. The minute Aurelia was actually, the minute Aurelia made it through the ban phase, it was known that, you know, she, we're bound to see her getting picked up. And I'm liking we're seeing another uh, very strong sort of mid game base, uh, mid laner coming up from Smarties, taking on Cassiopeia. It looks like we're going to have a bit of an interesting team composition, you know, a beginning to appear on screen from both teams. Yeah, absolutely. You don't see Cassiopeia very often as of late. And yeah, no, absolutely. Jarvan, Lee Sin, Hecarim, and Sejuani now are those staple junglers in the current meta. And we are going to have the Hecarim locked in on the blue side. That is probably going to go into the jungle. Although, again, there is the possibility for it to be uh, swapped around and go topside, but I think that's unlikely at this stage. Well, there's only one way to tell, and that's when we get through champion selection phase and they all just rearrange themselves quite a bit. I'm liking this. We have Kaiser be picked up. So mm. not only did they not get, they made it through band phase, they also managed to get picked up immediately by Zero IQ. They're really looking to try and get that hyper team going. And speaking of hyper, Zillion locked in. <laughs> A zillion of all things. Uh, that is probably going to go into the support role. And that just spells so many opportunities for the red side here of uh, HFC. Because Jarvan can go in and absolutely have the ultimate safe regard of having a revive as soon as he goes in. That is true. I mean, having that extra, like having that extra guardian angel available within your team composition makes it easier to be able to go in for a team fight. If you're the tank, more uh, more likely, or the ADC that does get caught out in the middle, or should I say, like you know, gets caught out before a team fight happens. Moving on, we seem. It looks like we have two supports banned away by HFC, Braum and Morgana. Ezreal being taken off the board as well. It looks like they really don't want, you know, the support player from uh, Zero IQ to come online or, like, get his comfortable picks. And it's sort of a similar type of uh, response coming. Actually, we see Jax taken away. It's a final ban. A little bit of a questionable ban, honestly. I mean, they've taken up Aurelia, which can only mean that she's being picked top side since Jax is a very powerful champion and we can definitely tell he's not going to be picked jungle because they do have Hecarim and Jalvan 4 picked away. Yeah and we're going to have the fourth pick coming in it's going to be a Draven a very ambitious pick that's going to be a pretty heavily uh, offensive focused bot lane coming out from HFC right there and I'm keen to see what the support pickup is on the blue side because as you said they banned two supports so it's kind of limiting they're going to probably go with the Velkos maybe there could be a Velkos mid, mid or support he has been known to come out through both uh, through both lanes it's interesting though I've got a Draven picked uh, with a Zillion as their duo lane down bottom Draven is one of those subs champions where it's a make it or break it champion I mean if he doesn't get any kills and he doesn't get ahead uh, with his gold accumulation he will fall behind and give his team a bit of a handicap that is definitely something to highlight Right, well, I think that just about settles it. It's going to be an Irelia in the mid lane, Velkoz support, and Riven in the top lane. And we're going to see the counter pick for the top lane coming out now. He's gone with the Renekton. That's a very nasty top lane, and that could honestly go either way. It more or less depends on the jungle pressure. If Hecarim can come in and just yeah, sort that stuff out, Riven can just blast on ahead. That is that is true. That is true. And the sort of I've just been given a bit more details about both teams. Zero IQ have four wins under their belts thus far in this circuit, and H HFC or Hibiki F uh, FC have five wins under the belt. So it's looking pretty. It's looking pretty close between these two teams. And I wonder whether this is going to bring them up to a sort of a tiebreaker between these two teams, or whether one team's going to come out on top and extend their. Uh, you know, add another win to their ladder or add another win to their scoreboard. But I'm liking that we've got. We've got Ribbon versus Rennington top lane. That's going to be a very interesting playoff against both teams. I mean, if Rennington has that press the attack, I will. I expect to see that he's going to go all in the minute he gets his W. Like he could start with his Q and then go straight into his W rare. It stuns. It also procs press the attack immediately, which allows him to do an extra 10% damage right on top of it. Whereas coming into like the mid teams like we've sorry the junglers we've got Hecarim versus Jarvan we saw this last time in the first segment between the other two schools ultimately Jarvan actually came out on top he had the early game advantage with the help of their top and mid laner I wonder if we're going to see something similar coming out from Cassiopeia and Rennington I mean he, we, I can only expect that both junglers will also take Conqueror since it actually has become 
a very strong keystone since it's been remastered to only become active when you're versing another champion. Like the more damage you do to a champion, whether it's abilities or base attacks, allows it to go online sooner. But also playing as a melee, it stays on for as long as possible, which makes it even more comfortable in a prolonged fight. So mainly Zero, I think, will benefit from Conqueror the most coming into this matchup. And looking at both mid laners, we've got Irelia versus Cassiopeia. Now, I can only understand that is going to be a very dreadful combination. I mean, Irelia is very mobile. Go up against Cassiopeia. If she can try and avoid those poisons, Cassiopeia is really going to be stuck underneath her own turret. She's going to have to play a lot more defensively and look for Exiv playing Jarvan 4 to try and come to her aid when uh, Todorific just pretty much go very hyper aggressive and go past the midpoint right over into her right over into Cassiopeia's territory and that could really open up opportunities for uh, HFC when you know they're coming in for a potential gank and a possibility of actually trying to open up uh, the mid the mid portion of the map a little bit more whether it's gone for Herald buff past 10 minutes or even Dragon buff just after five minutes when it spawns bottom lane I'm liking this is going to be really interesting like we've got Velko, we've got Velkos versus Velkos and Kaiser versus Draven and Zillion. Now that is going to be quite interesting. Velkos is a very strong support, especially being a mage base who's passive. Once you hit three stacks with an, using abilities on a single champion, you do like an extra burst. It's like a free electrocute that does true damage rather than adaptive damage. So I, f I feel as though if Sator can really like you know plant that combination on top of a single champion. He could really open up the lane for his partner. And since Kaiser works well off of champions, uh, sorry, off of uh, someone being you know stunned or knocked up into the air, anything that sort of creates a you know a CC based uh, you know opportunity on top of somebody, she gets an extra stack on her passive, and that's really going to allow her to open up her kit and try and highlight all five passives to do maximum. No, sorry, missing health damage. So the less health you have the more damage her passive will do. What are your thoughts about these edge? Oh, yeah, no, like, absolutely. I'm looking at the, uh, the first thing that came to my mind was the summoner spells, especially on the red side. For a good while, uh, Crit Crap was hovering over the cleanse, which was a bit questionable, considering there isn't too much hard crowd control on the side of the blue side, aside from the Velkoz and Riven and Irelia when they get on top of you. I actually uh, want to add another one to that list. Hecarim's ultimate. That charge just completely fears you for at least, I think it's a second and a half if he lands it right on top of you. Yeah, no, that is a definite factor. But I feel that uh, cleanse isn't uh, exactly worth all of that. And, uh, you know, he did swap over to barrier eventually and Zillion taking the heal. So it's more than likely going to be a bit of a passive lane uh, at, at the very, uh, for the first couple of minutes at the very least coming out for the bot side and i feel like the early game is more or less going to be decided by the jungle matchup whether or not hecarim can get an early advantage over uh, whichever game he just uh lane he decides to gank or if jarvan can counteract that and then just outright stomp him out and make hecarim irrelevant which we've all seen in many situations I like that I like that you pointed that out. Just both junglers will need to make themselves known quite early because they are known to be very uh, early gank lane based champions. I mean, you've got Hecarim with the movement speed, capabilities, and Jarvan Fall with his flag and drag. That is something I'm really looking forward to, you know, seeing happening coming into the, like the first five minutes or so. Cause once those, you know, once we see those Rift Scudders coming online, I expect we're gonna see both teams or both junglers being a little bit more aggressive and trying to make themselves known across the field a little bit better yeah no and on top of that as well we've got the mid lane matchup with irelia versus cassiopeia it's a very interesting matchup that you don't get to see too often and i'm very curious to see how it plays out because yes you've got irelia a very mobile champion able to dash around then you've got uh, cassiopeia able to uh, throw out with the miasma to stop her from landing any more of her cues and dashing out of the minion wave after she dashes in so that could potentially be a good catch out for when uh, Exiv decides to gank the mid lane. Yes, that is true. And like, you know, it is, it's very interesting to see both teams getting a bit of a, a nice uh, instant startup coming into this. Like all champions are loaded on the screen. We've got everything ready to go. I'm liking that we've got, you know, everybody just picking their items and immediately make themselves known on the map. Yeah, no, and yeah, I'm curious to see if we're going to see any kind of early aggression. I don't think we would. There's a very lack of hard crowd control uh, on first abilities for pretty much all across the board here. 
The only thing I could really note is if Velkos were to start E, but that's quite unlikely. Well, taking E is a little bit of a stretch. I mean, it can really go from... It can really go either way. And we are now getting back into game. We're going to have the red team and the blue teams moving out into the jungle. Let's see if uh, it bears fruit with the early aggression. Well, you know what? Taking the lead on this, because there isn't really much to go on just yet, it's a bit of an interesting... We have both top laners heading towards top. Mid lane is... Or should I say more or less Aurelius making himself known right on the turret, but it looks like we have more of a convergence coming on from uh, HFC. Like you've got Cassiopeia and Draven sitting in that bush. You've got Sneaky sitting inside his own tri uh, tri bush. It looks like they're trying to make sure that Hecarim gets his own buff without being countered. Like that's definitely something you want to look for because the last thing you want is to put your jungler behind considering the jungle changes. Yeah, no, and uh, it looks like it's going to just be a pretty uh, standard start for both teams here. And uh, I feel like this game's going to have a bit of a slow start, but once the ball gets rolling, it's just going to snowball in whichever team is able to get that early advantage until some kind of uh, turnaround is able hey, to Hey, honestly, come. having a passive startup can always be a good thing. Like, you don't always have to be aggressive and look for first blood before minions even spawn. I mean, it does create... A bit of a desync for the uh you know for the unfortunate losing team but at the same time it like you know it allows your team it allows both teams to remain prudent and not sort of like overstep themselves like you know whoever does get first blood commonly goes back to base and buys first blood, so they have that slight damage or you know utility advantage mainly because of the passives that it offers but it looks like we're not going to see anything like that coming into this and it's nice we've got a bit of a a complete shadowy matchup coming out from both junglers, both starting off bottom, Hecarim taking red, Javan taking blue, and they're immediately looking to, war to clear their camps between both buffs, and it's really nice to see. So, at least when they go back to base, they don't really have to worry too much about going for a gank immediately. They can look for the spare camp available on both sides. Yeah, no, and we're just having some early trades coming out here, especially towards the top side. Some early farm coming up for the Draven, able to land those double axes. That's a real ambitious start. However, Bavernity taking a bit of damage. He might be in a bit of trouble here if he's not too careful. He's able to pull back just in time, but the Q might connect. No, he's going to burn the heal. He's going to walk away just under half health. Real oh, burning that heal this early is a little bit premature, and it can't, it's actually going to put the back a little bit even more. I mean, yes, yeah, Celine does get low on health, but so do the other two in response. But the biggest difference between the two is that they both still have heal available in their kit, as well as like uh, a, a bubble in uh, response for Velkos. So mm. I feel so if they go for another fight, if Draven doesn't keep catching those axes and Zillian doesn't land the double bomb, it things could really spell, you know, disastrous for HFC and it could really put zero IQ ahead uh, when looking at bottom lane. Oh, absolutely. And we have uh, car six up here, or oh, sorry, zero. Moving around, going to get the early scuttle in that top side, but he's going to get spotted by the ward. There's a gank currently going on in mid lane. Terrific is getting dove on, and that is going to be a dead Irelia in a moment. No, the flash coming out from Smarties. Going to try and chase him down. He's going to be able to reach the blasting cone in time. Take it over to the blue buff. Let's see if the red team's bot side notices anything and tries to collapse. No, they're not. Uh, ter terrific is just going all the way, going to try and get the execute by landing the nice stun on top of Smarties. Let's see if it gets one and two. Oh, the Q misses, but first blood goes over to Cassiopeia anyway. Wow. A bit, of a, a bit of an extend, a bit of a prolonged fight, a bit of a chase, but at least at the end, you know, Smarties managed to get the mention with, you know, Tarot doing the rest of the damage. Dino, on the other hand, is making himself very aggressive in top. He pops the Conqueror. He had help from Zero. It was just unfortunate that there was no major follow-up. I mean, this early, and look how passive they both are. They're both sitting behind that midpoint. Dino is just being hyper-aggressive. Look at him go. He's really trying to maximize the efficiency of his gap-closing capabilities with that 3Q lineup. And Renekton able to get some good hits in with that EQ combo. Just dash in, Q, dash out. They can't even trade against it, and it's a beautiful thing. Uh, but yeah, no, that flash uh, that flash Q from Exiv just before Under the Tower, bit questionable, not entirely necessary, obviously. And let's see if that uh, hinders him in any way in an early trade, where we might be going to see something happen in the mid lane. But meanwhile, in the top side, Dinox getting doxed by the Renekton. I actually thought he was going to go down in that fight. I mean, he gets caught out. The, the PTA, sorry, the Conqueror does get popped. 
He managed to get his entire kit on top of him, but just that shield Dino has really early into the matchup is really saving him. Like he's able to actually soak up a little, a lot of damage without coming at the cost of his own health. Bottom lane is something we do should we should actually be looking at because Draven is considerably ahead. Like yes, he's only 10 CS, but there's nothing short of how aggressive he is. Like look, he's past the midpoint. He's on their side of the map. He's really trying to show lane dominance, and that could really work well for his team. The only thing I fear, looking on the minimap, is that there is no wards coming out from those two. If Hecarim comes through the tri bush and makes himself, you know, a bit of a far lap brace coming through the river, he could really catch him off guard and give his and give his team a little bit more of a favorable position. He can also knock them back into him, which even which extends the fight for even longer because he would either have the pop flash barrier or Zillion would have to try and come up with something a little bit cunning to try and save him somehow. And, you know, just looking how things are going at this point. And we're going to have another trade coming out here. Verbinity taking a lot of damage. And Smarties as well taking a lot of damage. That's Ignite popped down. That's going to be a dead snake lying down in the mid lane. Meanwhile, a rather unsuccessful trade for HFC in the bot side. A really unfavorable trade, but it's nice to see. Like, we've got Sneaky and we've got Sneaky and Sutor coming back online they're trying to push it back to a midpoint where they can actually come online for hecarim like yes they have been forced under she isn't really focusing greatly on getting that cs whereas Which hecarim coming in is going the, bot hard. Side. the e doesn't connect outright the draven able to dislodge it i mean i'm renekton diving on top of the riven going to go down without any sort of issue and that's going to be a couple of turret platings free for the renekton well, that's if he decides to choose it, because looks like he's just trying to clear farm so that he can, like, you know, take it with he ease. Demolish, he should be able to take it pretty easily. Uh, he's going for it now, which is nice, but this early, he doesn't really have a lot of damage to offer. I mean, yeah, he could probably do 50 damage per hit on a turret, but that's more or less the maximum of it until Riven comes back to lane. And it's nice that he's got this... He's actually got this big advantage for him, you know, leading for himself. He has a kill... He's nearly 20 CS up, and he's had a little bit of uh, lane availability, or should I say lane dominance, where he's actually been able to soak up extra CS, extra XP, free gold, and now he's going to looking to go back to base. He's completed that team at. Now, we can only assume he's actually going to get stronger from this point on. Like, the gap between him and Riven is beginning to accumulate. Like, we're going to see a difference between the two. And I don't think Jarvan 4 would really need to make himself known top unless he decides to go passive. Yeah, we're going to have another trade coming out here and Renekton just abusing the Tiamat usage. And Hecarim could come topside, but I don't think it would work out for them. I think Hecarim would easily be able to turn that 2v1 on its head and then just use that advantage even more. He could. I mean, the the ultimate is down. Like, Renekton won't be able to have that tanky uproar if he decides Hecarim to get caught out. will be trying to come out. into the mid lane here, though. Terrific. Able to land the stun, and that's going to be the E coming in. The Aurelia ult actually misses, though. The nice ult from Smarties. And he's going to get ulted on by the Hecarim, and it's going to connect. And that's going to be a clean double kill coming out for the side of Zero IQ. Meanwhile, another trade happening in the bot lane. That's going to be Varenity having to use the ultimate on himself. He's going to go down eventually, and that's going to be a lot of damage coming down on the Seek Ninja. Flash forward from Critcrat. He's not going to be able to land the kill. And that's going to be a very near dead. Uh, oof, Kaiser. That was a very favorable trade for HFC. I mean, just. Sure, I know, the taking a lot of damage from the towel. What happened there? A bit of an overextend, I think. I mean, he th yeah. he had a lot of guts. He thought he was going to get the glory, but he just came within that basic attack range of turret that he managed to taunt it out and take a few too many hits that worked in favor of Dino. If he was just outside of that turret range, he would have been able to actually clean up that fight and give himself a second kill and even more of a staggering lead. I mean, you know, you at this point, you'd want to try and get as much of a... a as much of a lead as you can because when coming into the mid game we're going to see completed items and we're going to see the shift in balance between uh, you know the, yeah, uh, the, the shift power in balance Irelia coming in onto the bot side that's going to be a clean gank no ult from Zillion he's able to not connect the stun just yet but the slow coming out is not going to be enough there's not too much follow up unfortunately for the blue side there sorry to cut you off uh, not a problem, but it was very interesting to see. Draven managed to just walk backwards into the enemy uh, into and enemy lines when he saw that side. line. And that's going to be a Dinox going down eventually to the Renekton, hopefully. Come on, guys, finish it oh, off. They are, he, I think what? Exif is trying <laughs> to give him the free kill. He was trying, yeah, he was trying real hard. And we're going to try and hard push this, try and get as much plating as they can with the Demolish proc. 
I feel as though, considering she is now absent, she doesn't have anything left. Her teleport is on cooldown. She still has 15 seconds to respawn. She has an added 30 seconds to get from base 2 lane that they could actually take away first turret and open up the map in their own favor, which means Hecarim's going to have to be a little bit more careful when treading around his blue territory, because for all we know, Exiv might actually look for a gank. Yeah, no teleport. Hecarim is not topside. That's going to be first turret going for HFC. Absolutely, now at this stage, yeah. it's looking like both teams are beginning to open up a little bit. Like, sorry, HFC are looking to open up a little bit more. The Herald has pot. The Herald is online. It's available for anybody to take down. The only thing I'm finding a little bit uh, odd between two teams is that we're seeing a lot of attention happening from Zero IQ in the blue half of the map, which is a little bit odd because they don't, they shouldn't really be sitting up there when they're missing that top turret. I mean, yes, Aurelia can go up and Riven can come down to help. But that's really going to come at a cost. Because look at Smarties. He's going to have that availability to free farm the lane, soak up more CS, and try and get ahead. She's beginning to come online. Like, she's got that completed. She's got that completed tier of the Goddess. She might be looking to get that Archangel staff immediately. She doesn't need to worry about boots, which means she's going to be able to start getting more damage items sooner. And if yeah, Relly's not over, careful, Irelia that could a lot of damage. They're all going in the complete opposite direction. A nice ult from Smarty. He's landing onto zero. He's going to be able to kite around and walk away from that. Questionable ult from Irelia going in the complete opposite direction. I feel the exact same. Soon as soon as you mentioned that ult, he went in the opposite direction. The first thing that went through my mind was she was probably expecting a flash in the opposite direction as well. So it, I think she was preemptively expecting Smarty to try and get behind her. So that way she could try and like preemptively go right up and like, you know, I know you're going to flash behind me. So I decided to use Vanguard's edge in that direction. But unfortunately, it didn't work well in her favor. So her prediction was good. It's just, you know, the follow-up was exactly in Smarty's favor. Yeah, and with all that effort exerted from Zero in the mid lane with his ultimate use, that's going to be a clean Cloud Drake for HFC. And oh, yeah, they're going to I, put that I feel as though that's all she wrote. I mean, look at Dino. He's being hyper aggressive now. Sh Shiro has got that completed Conqueror online. He's really glowing. Bottom oh, lane, yeah. it's nice. We're seeing a bit of a stalemate between both sides. The only major difference between these two players is that, you know, Kaisa is forced back a little bit. She is being denied a bit of CS and XP soakage, mainly because of how aggressive these two are. Like, those bombs coming out from Hebe is really nice. And Crit Krat, with those axes on top of these basic attacks, are really proving to be... A bit of an unfortunate um, disadvantage for Kaiser. Yeah, he's currently sitting on 300 Adoration stacks, so as soon as he cashes that in, he'll be a happy chappy. And although it does look relatively even, it still, like, it, it still does, in a way, look to be in the favor of HFC, but they are making a lot of mistakes, and that could change if they continue to do so. The, I have to agree with that. Oh, there's a lot of damage. Flash coming out from Smarty is a bit questionable, and another flash coming out from Terrific. Just it was nice to see a defensive reflash. It was nice to see a defensive flash from both sides. Oh yeah, I mean, you have to agree. Getting out of a pickle using flash is always nice to see. At, at least they, yeah, at least they made each other use flash. So now it's an even matchup. The only thing I'm finding still really interesting between these two teams at this early stage is that we're not seeing a lot of uh, team collaboration. We're seeing a lot of separation of powers between the two. Yeah, no, we definitely are, and that's going to be Verini taking a step a bit too far forward and not using the ultimate on himself. Not even using heal. No, Hebe, what was that? Just the overextension. Oof. Yeah, no, like I, like I said, if they keep making those mistakes, it's going to start to show up. And this is exactly what we, this is exactly what you would hope for, and you know, in coming into a team-based environment, is that you'd want to try and capitalize on those errors made by the opposition. Because if you can see those errors made, you can capitalize on that, take, make it your advantage point, and clean up an easy kill like we saw Sneaky get right on top of Hebe just by going a little bit too far. Yeah, no, we are going to have Hecarim able to keep his blue for himself, thankfully. And that Irelia is looking more and more dangerous by the second. And if they're I... able to pop off, that's going to be a very bad team fight. That yeah. is true. I mean, the Tiamat, the Hex Dream. Uh, coming in. That's a flash forward from Shiremo, flashing onto uh, Sotori Cheetah, going to be able to land the stun. And that's going to be a lot of damage coming down. He's going for the tower dive. He's got the Zillion on top of him. He can keep on going, but he's going to back out just in time. I think the ult's going to get popped. There it is. Irelia's there on the side, though. He's going to be able to catch up Arendi with the ultimate. And then there's Kit Crap being chased down by Dianox. 
and Sneaky Ninja, he's going to be able to make it under the tower just in time, but I think Riven's going to be able to finish him off eventually. Toronto still fighting the good fight in the mid lane. Oh, sorry, in the bottom lane. Not able to kill Sneaky Ninja. What was that? That was just a whole stuff going about. That was, that was a lot of action happening bottom lane. Like, it's nice to see both top laners decide to teleport down bottom. Unfortunately, Shiro going didn't in under the Smarties. And Riven coming in. Dinox able to get in range just in time. No, the ultimate coming in from Smarties is going to be able to block them off. Meanwhile, Exif is getting butted down. He's able to EQ out just in time. Action is just happening. Action is coming. Well, we're coming into the 15 minute mark. We've got we've got turrets flying down. We've got turrets crumbling down. We have items being included a little bit across the board. Like it's still anybody's game since we're not really seeing a lot of actual completed items. We're actually seeing a lot of like hybrid building. And when I say hybrid building, I mean, we're sort of trying to go for a little bit more of a flex pick. Like we're seeing Aurelia go with three different item choices. Like the Tiamat, the Hex Drinker, the Sheen. It's a damage and like utility galore. Like the bubble you get from that is really going to help her against Cassiopeia. Yeah, Kaiser and Draven are the only solid two. Ferenity overextending quite a bit recently really needs to work on that. Otherwise, they're just going to be they're just going to keep on getting caught out, and that Zillion ultimate is going to be worth nothing. That is true. I mean, that over his overextension is really becoming his weakness, and he's getting caught out and punished quite harshly. Like Sutoro, like Sutoro is doing so well. Same with Sneaky. Like they're really trying to get on top of them when they get within the basic yeah, and attack. And Crab getting dove onto with the Hecarim coming in. The E is going to be able to stop Zero in his tracks. They're going to safely get out of that bot lane, looking to be the center of attention for Zero IQ as of late. Well, one thing that we also have to point out: look at the ward control coming in bottom side. We've got oh, yeah. at least two in Dragon Pit coming out from HFC. Two, one in one in the tribush, one just got destroyed down in the river. It looks like we might see Smarties. He's forced under his turret. He's being denied any possibility of going in. Jarvan Four might actually get boxed in here. Yeah, they're grouping up for that dragon. Sharemo with no teleport. He's going to tr like to look to try and just split push this out. Yeah, you can see the pings coming out. They're going to give up this ocean drake more than likely, and just try and hold the mo mid and bottom lane as they are. Oh, Cassiopeia does get caught by the Void Seeker. Now we've got Hecarim coming with a charge. The Melba Cup's on his way. No, he doesn't follow through. I actually thought he was going to follow through with that. But look what, look what Renekin's doing. It's almost as if they just gave up Ocean Dragon to get a free uh, to get a free turret. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, well, whether you or not you want to call that worth, I guess, is uh, dependent on your opinion of the Ocean Drake. Whether you think that mana and health regen is going to be worthwhile enough. But... This, key, this team comp doesn't look like the kind that's going to have long drawn out fights where the Ocean Drake is going to be, well, worthwhile. Because we've got people like Riven and Irelia who just want to go in and win the fight straight up. That's very interesting that you pointed that out. Like, so far, all the fights we've seen between champions and when they, you know, they come to life. Onto the Hecarim. That's going to be the ult coming out from Sneaky Ninja. He's going to be able to land the Ignite, and the damage is coming through. Meanwhile, Exiv is trying to ward them off. He's going to walk away. The Zillion ult was popped, as well as the Ignite nothing happens in the bot lane you know to c continue on with what i said before we do see a lot of team fights and as you said they're not really prolonged fights so it looks like it's going to be an instant kill or an instant getaway like we saw just then draven managed to get away even though hecarim didn't really get to charge on him and force him back into his own team and it's nice to see because both teams are looking to try and keep the advantage as much as close as they can between one another because at the moment the only major advantage I'm seeing between both teams is that one turret is down for HFC, whereas four kills are on top for Zero IQ. And if Zero IQ don't start looking to get objectives, this could really work unfavorably for them, mainly because this isn't so much a team deathmatch, it's an objective match. So you need to take down those turrets, you need to get those buffs, you need to kill the Nexus ultimately for the game to end, otherwise it will just go on endlessly. Yep, and I think that's going to be bottom turret falling down to crit crap who unfortunately was not able to cash in those 300 adoration stacks. It is now back down to a measly 160. Very sad life for the Draven. A very sad life indeed. And like just looking at this Irelia, you said before, she is getting dangerous by the and minute. That's going to be and a dive onto Sutura Chera. Meanwhile, they take the mid lane turret, and that's going to be a nice stun coming out from Varenity. And that's going to be a dead Velkoz. Meanwhile, there's another fight happening in the mid lane. Teremo is going to get dove onto by the stun from the Aurelia, and they're not going to be able to follow up just in time. No, Terrific able to flash forward and get the double dash onto them. That's going to be a double kill oh. for the Aurelia. 
What was that, Rannington? You go back into the fight right after Cassiebe goes down. You should have just kept yourself out of the fight and get away clearly because you just gave up two easy kills. Aurelia, 5-1-2, 550 gold as her bounty, 178 CS, the most in the game. She is just getting more Not done just up. yet, though. Quick Cat getting ulted on by the Hecarim. Meanwhile, Varenity forced the flash away from the Riven. They're going to be able to slowly kite them back. Movement speed coming out from the Zillion. They're going to be able to slowly move back away with the Draven Axe. Movement speed. And they're hungry. They're going back in. They've got the, no mana on Draven, so it'd be very unwise to keep on going. But showing dominance is always appreciated. At 20 minutes 15, this is just beginning to light up so evenly. Like, we saw a lot of, we saw a big team fight happen mid lane where it worked heavily in favor of Zero Q, claiming at least two kills. We see another action bottom lane. No kill was done in return, but he be being the savior for Crit Cat. Just using using that Hextech, uh, I believe it's the Hextech GLP with the succession of Glacial Augment to slow them down and give him that extra movement speed through his ability to get away cleanly. Like, I gotta say, like, Hebe was the MVP of that bottom fight, and mid lane just totorific. It's just getting nastier by the second. Like, she has that completed Trinity Force, and that's really gonna give her that power spike she needs. Whereas Cassiopeia, she has that completed Archangel Staff, the Riley's, the Riley's Crystal Scepter, which is gonna enable her to actually slow down enemies to either get close to them or run away from them. I fear for her safety because she does need to land those poisons in order for her to become more effective. Yeah, no, and uh, yeah, as you said, Varenity, uh, Varenity definitely making up for the uh, mistakes of pushing too far forward and getting caught. Now soulfully sticking with the Draven and supporting Critcrat as much as possible. Meanwhile, again, it looks like Critcrat's going to be the subject to another uh, multi-man Exif, going to get dove onto EQ out. Elko's ultimate not able to connect to too many people, and they're going to keep on trying to chase, but they're going to be able to walk out very slowly. Meanwhile, another trade happening. Ultimate pop from Renekton and ultimate pop from Riven. Let's see who wins this Battle of the Titans. Meanwhile, a snake is coming in, and to show them just what's what, they're going to land the Miasma and stop the Riven from dashing away. That's going to be an easy kill going over to Shiro Where are the wards from Zero? Ribbon could have gotten away. Dino could have gotten away so cleanly if there was a ward present, but I'm not seeing any wards coming, you know, appearing topside that are appearing blue on the minimap. Like, she is really caught out of bounds, and that really led to her ultimate downfall. Bottom lane, just as bad. Like, we're seeing only one ward in the jungle. We're seeing a control ward in the river bush. Hecarim's going after Drag. We see Jarvan 4 jumping down below. And we're seeing Rennington capitalize on his investment and just completely takes away tier two turret top. That's really opening up the top half of the map for HFC, that this is really looking like a favorable position at the moment. Like yeah, Shiro- It absolutely is, and Smarties right. able to get the drop on Zero, who thought he was gonna get the drop on Smarties. That's gonna be an easy kill, and they might be able to push this mid lane turret in. They the are pushing it in hardcore, like Todorific is not doing enough for his team. Denok's getting dove onto by the Jarvan, though. He's going to barely be able to get away. The Zillion Bomb will finish them off. And oh. again, they can just keep on pushing. Minion Wave coming in right now. Renekton probably has Demolish up. Dino, once again, overextending like we saw from Rennington before. He went in That's a little too deep. coming up from caught. Exif onto Surachira. The Dunk coming through Draven. They able to finally cash in. And that's going to... They're going to just keep on pushing. They've got the minion. No, they've only got one cast minion left. They're not going to be able to keep on pushing just right now. No, but I don't think that we're going to need to worry about it. They have five turrets. They have a staggering 6,000 gold advantage. They might be looking to Baron, considering where the rest of the team is going. HFC have this in the bag right uh, at this point. Uh, at this point in time, they've got wards everywhere, which is really nice to see. However, Zero IQ need to put more wards out in order to actually stay alive. As I said in Champion Select, we do need to see more wards happening more or less just outside of base now because they have no turrets left available. Minions can't really make it out that far unless they manually push out. But that's going to come at the cost of team play and macro management between both teams that it's, work it's working really favorable for HFC for these reasons. And the way they're going, they could actually continue to force them right on top of their own nexus. Like if they decide to go for Baron, it will be a fight between the two, but I feel as though HFC will come out the victors mainly because of how well they've been collabing as a team. Yeah, and they're going to be clearing out the Baron Pit now, looking to establish some vision while Renekton split pushes in the bot lane. Teleport is available, and that could be a very nice situation ha happening for HFC right now. And as you can see, Renekton already finished the, uh, I believe that is the 
Spear of Shojin, a very nice item, adding that 20% CDR on top of the Black Cleaver 20% CDR, capping him out, as well as the AD and health regen, or oh, sorry, and just general health. It's going to be, uh, going to make that Ren Renekton a very, very bad threat to deal with. He's going to be a, he is going to be a very affordable foe, Ash. I mean, that Spear of Shojin active as well, when he ulties, is really going to give him a lot of a lot of capabilities to use his use his abilities much more freely because every time he he gets the extra attack speed he also gets cooldown reduction uh you know on his remaining cooldowns from any of his abilities that are not considered his ultimate and he could stun anybody within two seconds of just popping it immediately and that's really going to open things up because he has that tm at he's got the black cleaver which spreads the uh debuff that black cleaver has to offer across everyone else and just the overall damage and health he has, he doesn't really have a lot of armor and magic resistance, but that's really going to matter much because his ulti gives him like an extra 400 health AOE damage. And just all up front, the Ooh, assault Dinox catching means. out Crit Crat here, but I think Crit Crat might be the one that <laughs> has the advantage here. Meanwhile, Terrific trying to connect the stun, has to flash over the wall. Meanwhile, Vex is coming over the wall and he's going to be able to dunk onto both of them. And that's going to be a very nice kill coming out from Crit Crat onto Dinox, and that's going to be a very free Baron. Meanwhile, Shiromoro, still pushing that bot lane, has Sneaky Ninja down there, so there's no ADC to help. Not only just side. an ADC, they also didn't have their top lane, and Adinu is on cooldown for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. The rest of the team are preoccupied elsewhere. We are seeing more wards. We're also seeing just as many wards from the opposition. Sneaky, what are you doing? Terrific, yes, you're down there, but there's not really much else you're going to be able to offer. Jero's taking a lot of damage for no apparent reason. Sneaky, flashing forward, he's going to be able to get a solo kill onto Shiromero. What is that? I'm not sure what happened down there. Meanwhile, Zero getting caught out by Crit Crat. He's going to be able to run away, I think. Yep, the movement speed is just going to be enough for Hecarim. Oh, and that Hextech GLP narrowly missing those shards, enabling him to get away much more cleanly. Crit Cat not available, not able to get close enough to try and finish him off. I feel as though if he did, it would have been a different story. And that would have actually put them so far ahead that it wouldn't even be funny. I mean, right now, it's not even funny as it is just looking at the stats. Like, the stats speak for themselves. Two turrets to five. 42 of posts to 48.3. Two, two dragons to one. Not really anything relevant. 11 kills to 10. But the main thing to highlight is that the turrets are going down. We're seeing... Yeah. The Baron has now avail the Baron buff is now available for HFC that things are really beginning to come to life for them. And the difference between both team both teams and their oppositions with team compositions coming into play, making them more effective use. I mean coming in at 20 minutes 34. I wonder what we're gonna see Ooh. coming out for both teams. So far, a nice stun. But he's might be able to go down himself. Ultimate from Zillion was popped, but he might still be in trouble there. Dragon was picked up by Smarties, but there's another ha uh, fight happening in the top lane between Riven and Renekton, and that's going to be a very nice stun coming down. Riven, I don't think you're going to be able to get away. No, you're not. And there's going to be an easy kill. The Sheromero there in the top lane, able to keep on split pushing. Meanwhile, the rest of HFC is, looks like to be grouping in the mid and bot lane with that Baron buff still on them. They are converging on top of Hecarim. It's interesting that Hecarim got away cleanly. There was a lot of wards present. They knew where he was. They didn't make any effective use of it. Like they have so much pressure applied to him. You've got mid. You've got mid lane push right up to the inhibitor turret. Bottom lane looking to take down that tier two turret. Just the same. They've almost going to have nothing left outside of their base. That zero IQ are going to be forced to try and just essentially recover themselves. Keep those war. Keep those minions outside of baseline so that they can try and get some vision around the map. I mean, they are lacking quite a bit, and this isn't really going to work oh, well for going to be him. smart. He's getting engaged on very briefly. Cleanse does break the stun, but two cannon minions. That's uh, no joking matter. Meanwhile, Terrific getting absolutely dove on by three members, and that's going to be smart. He's knocked inside of Blue Team's base, not going to be able to get out just in time. The Cataclysm actually trapping them inside. The Velcro's ultimate able to do a good amount of damage, but it's not going to be able to finish them off. Okay, it's going to be able to finish off Zillion at least, but the Zillion ultimate on top of Renekton is going to be able to save him. Crit Mean on Crit Crat, forcing the stopwatch from Sneaky Ninja. And this is just a bit of a bloodbath all around. It was. It was quite the bloodbath indeed. Like, just the upfront aggression was all well and good. The only unfortunate thing was they actually put themselves right behind enemy lines. They took so many turret hits. And when Cataclysm came out from Exif, 
not only did he lock in two enemies, he locked in a partner, and because, you know, uh, Sutor managed to pop an ulti on top of at least two of them, that really tired, that really turned the tides of uh, that fight in their favor. That Zero IQ managed to nearly ace the entire team and give themselves a position to recover. Like, we're coming into the late game now that they really need to try to look for opportunities to try and catch out what anybody from HFC have, you know, made in terms of errors, capitalize on that, and then try to make aggression where they can. Because so far, the biggest disadvantage I'm seeing coming out from Zero IQ is that they're not really applying pressure anywhere, Edge. Like, yeah, they're, they're no. not applying pressure towards top lane. Like, yes, Dino is really trying to push it up towards that turret and take it down. Unfortunately, it's not working too well in her favor because she's getting caught out quite often. Like we saw before, when Shiro managed to jump on top of her, he popped his ulti. He had those ultimate cooldowns just because the Spear of Shoujin's active that he managed to keep the gap uh, between him and Dino close enough that he was able to finish him off quite easily. Yeah, no, and I think the one thing that shows that it went in favor of Zero IQ for that last fight is that HFC was not able to get that mid lane inhibitor turret. It is still up and it is slowly regenerating health. If they can hold on to it, it can still become a bit of a defendable position for them. It is a defendable position as well. It can be disadvantageous because that is still below 10% health. That is a critical point. And if they decide to let Shiro go on top with Hebe's ulti on, um, you know, to sort of save him if he goes down, unfortunately, by taking too much damage, that won't really make a difference because they won't have that turret available afterwards. I can see they'll probably try and focus it, take it down, start a team fight where they won't be at a disadvantage whatsoever. If anything, the fight, the fight will work favorably for them. I think Smarties might be out. having a bit of an issue here. He's currently just sitting in the corner, and that's going to be a full-on dive on top of them. That's going to be a very clean kill coming out. Smarties is disconnected. That's it. That's three kills going straight over. They are going to have a pause because, well, as we could clearly see, Smarties may have been having some kind of issue. Well, according to the rulebook, if you do not pause the minute one of your players is having a bit of a connection issue, the fight will continue and nothing will come, nothing will change until that pause is made known on the rift. And like from what we saw, they just gave away three clean kills for zero IQ, giving them an opportunity to possibly make a comeback. And looking at how things are going, looking at how things are going, like we're seeing 45 second cooldown timers from at least three members of HFC. Baron's getting close to respawning. You've got all members from Zero IQ still up and active. They are missing two, three ultis in that mix, but I feel as though that's nothing short of how much they can actually try and do for their team, considering they might be able to actually make a comeback. Totorific does well to be the upfront engager with that Vanguard's Edge. Hecarim getting that ulti in to get the Grand Slam on the enemy team with a fear. Sneaky being able to charge in with a killer instinct, getting that bubble and the upfront assault onto anybody. And Dino to help with the aggression. Sotor sitting behind, just getting some free procs on his passive onto anybody who gets hit by that line of fire from that disintegration ray. It's looking like things could really things could really turn out for Zero IQ, and that's what we want to see. We don't want to see a complete one-sided match. We want to see a close nick match between both sides. I mean, what are your thoughts, Edge? Oh no, a absolutely. A close game is a good game, and as we can see, Hecarim he was kind of irrelevant for that first part more uh, first part of the game more or less. But as we can see, he's got the Cinder Hulk, he's got the Trinity Force, and he's very close to finishing off the Sterex Gauge, and that's going to be where he starts to really pop off. He's going to be able to dive onto that backline, onto Crit Crat, onto Smarties, and he's going to be able to deal a lot of damage. One thing I definitely also have to highlight, even though Cassiopeia did go down in that fight because of a possible connection issue, look at her item build. She's got three completed items. She's getting closer to that zone his Hourglass, yeah. that if she gets caught in another team fight. It's, it will still work in favor of HFC because she'll still be available for her team. And if she continues to try and try and kite them into the middle of the enemy line, she could get her stone gaze on at least three members from zero IQ and really put them in a favorable position. I feel I feel as though, or well, my prediction for the, the for the foreseeable five minutes is that when that Baron comes online, that's going to be a priority for both teams that if HFC get that buff, they will potentially look to actually end the game, whereas Zero IQ, the best way they could actually go about this is if they try to manage to ace all of HFC, claim Baron, and push every push every single lane out so that they have a little bit more freedom to gain more map control, because so far, they have no map control. We're seeing minimal warding across the map. Like, I'm seeing at maximum one, two, three vision wards, two in the unknown area that is way too far 
outside of their you know freedom of movement range mm. i'm seeing two in the bottom jungle which is nice to see but the only problem is they've also hfc have a lot of wards in response as well like we're seeing two in the blue jungle we're seeing two in the red jungle as well as control ward just before the entrance to the midpoint jungle and we're seeing river scatter going down as well in front of dragon pit so i wonder what we're going to see coming out from brave teams because the lack of vision coming out from zero iq is what i see as their their anchor their handicap at the moment like they need to start catching out members from hfc in order to respond quite well yeah no and but i feel like another part of this correlates to how hfc is currently trying to approach the game as we saw before obviously uh the dc is in no way shape or form a mistake but with the way that they were going about they were looking to try and siege that top lane tower but with nothing to help siege them especially up against something like a hecarim or a velkos that can easily counteract a, any kind of dive attempt and it feels like they're just going about it the wrong way they need to more or less hold back wait for a pick and then go for objectives they can't that fight is, inside of their base that is true i mean fighting inside your own base is already unfavorable because it's your own base unless you have all your turrets available and the enemy team is looking to troll and just go straight inside it's not exactly going to look favorable either way and seeing how seeing as zero iq are already sort of stuck inside that region it's really going to look it's really making things harder for them and i wonder what we're going to like i wonder what uh, hfc are going to do to try and sort of you know tuck this game away under the bed and claim it theirs because at this point it looks like they've got this under the wraps like they've got this under their bed this is their game they did get taken down but i feel as though that was mainly because they were trying to defend cassiopeia and unfortunately gave away three kills for uh, you know the rest of the team and rennington's being forced back a bit he's at that midpoint in bottom lane zillion is being forced to run away because he was there with the team he didn't go down he didn't pop his ulti which is a little bit of a questionable remark i mean you would have probably wanted to pop it on top of cassiopeia then pop pause Mm. yeah no that would have been the ideal solution for this scenario but uh unfortunately yeah i don't think uh, anyone foresaw this happening immediately and i feel like the main way that hfc can try and recover from this because as it currently stands that i'd go so far as to say that they're losing at this point even though they've you know obviously got more towers and more objective and vision control they're not winning team fights. They're going about it the wrong way. They need to look for individual picks when they venture off into the jungle eventually when they're no longer able to farm from their base. That is absolutely true. They aren't winning team fights. They are getting caught out left, right, and center almost. Like, Rennington is down bottom. He's on his own. He doesn't really have a lot left in his kit. He, d he has that teleport available, but he's not really using it effectively, or should I say upfront, to help his team and sort of scare off the rest of Zero IQ. He's just sitting there, just farming away quite cleanly, quite comfortably, trying to stack those items. Like, he's getting close to his fourth and his fourth item. I can only assume it would be a Revenous Hydra. No, sorry, Titanic Hydra, because of the amount of health items he's got. But apart from that, if he's not present with his team, he won't be able to put them in a position where they can actually ace the rest of Zero IQ and tuck the game away under their bed. It's a little bit of a misstep at the moment. Yeah, no, it really is. And of course, we have the Jarvan uh, 0, 2, and 7 with Black Cleaver, Dead Man's Plate, and Cinder Hulk. Not sure what else there really is for him to go with. I'd imagine some form of MR item, perhaps a Mercurial Scimitar coming out next for him. Other than that, it's, yeah, pretty much it's at that point where items don't exactly mean too much, it's more about macro. It def yeah, it could be more about macro. Well, then again, coming like looking at the timestamp, 31 minutes 32, it is the macro point. I mean, we are looking more towards macro gameplay rather than just, you know, looking at trying to, you know, get a play here and there. I mean, yes, the objectives are nice, but we're getting to that point that no one's going to be able to actually look for a free farm. Like, yes, we see Rennington doing the bottom, but that's with all good intentions at the cost it comes at a great cost because we're past lane phase we're past mid game phase we're at the late game point where a single ace could mean the end of the game mm. yeah no absolutely because uh with that 50 second death timers 
round the corner. If uh, any team's able to outright just wipe out the other, they could easily just make a hard push for those objectives, more than likely down the mid lane, to just try and get as much uh, as possible, if not just end the game outright. Yes, and I believe we have, uh, according to the rules and regulations, if the pausing team does not come back within the next 45 seconds or unpause within the next 45 seconds, they will have to forfeit this match tonight. And it's really unfortunate. Because uh, things were going really wrong. Oh, no, I told you. I spoke too soon. We're getting back in. <laughs> we are back in the game, and things are underway again. We have Zero IQ now grouped up as a team moving down the mid lane. They want to take action. They are looking to take action, like we're seeing the rest of Zero IQ pushing it down mid. They might be looking to try and give themselves a bit of extra leg room. Yeah, they do have the minion wave coming up. They should more than able to be able to take at least this outer turret. I feel as though they're going to get this uncontested. Like, they still have 15 seconds on three death timers. HFC, look where Rennington is. He's not really doing anything oh, to help keep save going. His They want the inhib turret. That, this might be the play moment. This might Ooh. be the playmaking moment. And coming to another pause, the remaining team still has 30 seconds left on the clock before they do have to, you know, set this t set this game in favor of the L position. Mainly because the timer it set and were available for each team is 10 minutes. So, yeah. 15 seconds to go. If they do manage to come back from this, I feel as though they could actually try and turn this around. Like, yes, zero IQ are pushing quite heavily. But if the rest of HFC manage to get back online before they push all the way into the base, they could actually look to end it. Yeah, no, they absolutely could. And yeah, we have now passed the 20 minute mark for the pause timer. So I'm uh, unsure of what the current, well, the situation is. Uh, it looks like we're going to unpause right now. It looks like we're just about ready. No, we have a, another pause again. It looks like we're having a lot of connection issue tonight. A really I unfortunate, a, a really unfortunate turnaround. I think this is a pause on the side of Zero IQ. I think they are pausing the game now to cover uh, any additional time from HFC. I'm not sure if that's allowed, but I mean, it's happening. <laughs> I believe they're giving them an extra two minutes leg room by taking away two minutes of their own uh, timer. Yeah. It is really unfortunate. I mean, we're getting so close to the end of the... We're getting so close to the game ending moment. Like, both teams are looking pretty strong. However, unfortunately, we do see a, a big difference. Like, on screen, we have the pause timer on, which gives us a bit of a moment... Gives us a moment to look at what's actually happening. And Zero IQ are pushing in quite heavily. They're looking to try and make turn this around. They are behind in gold. They are behind in turrets. But with three seconds on death timers, at least, it's going to be interesting if they manage to take down that inhibitor because they're past the 20 minute point where every single member that comes out from the fountain is going to get the extra movement speed capabilities to be able to lock them down. And that's really going to be unfavorable for Zero IQ because they don't really have the ability to get out if they get caught out. We see Rennington's already beginning to teleport back to base that I wonder if they're going to be able to actually turn this around. Because at this point, it looks like they might be able to uh, clean away an easy inhibitor and get away cleanly and possibly try and go for Baron. Yeah, I feel like the smart play for Zero IQ right now would be to take the inhibitor turret and then back out, clear vision, reset, and then move towards those objectives. Win another team fight because clearly they can win team fights, and then just go again. Win that team fight, get the objective, push mid lane, end probably. Yeah, so with that, that is the gate. That is the actual end of the game today. I believe we're going to have to call it here. One team has been given their 10 minute timer. They have used it up. They have gone into the opposition's timer delay, but I believe that is actually going to be it. I'm just well, going to I check mean, with our admins as we game is uh, currently out underway, this so... It is underway, but I believe we passed the timer already. Yeah. So, you know, all good intentions. The rules do have to be stipulated. Yeah, no, that last pause was uh, started by the side of Zero IQ. Zero, speaking of which, getting caught out by the Jarvan Force, used the Blast Stone to get away. And yeah, it looks like they've cleared the vision and are now going to try and reset. I believe... I'm being I'm being asked... I'm being asked something, and I'm trying to figure out what's actually going on. Uh, between these two teams because we're having a bit of a discrepancy between uh, the time delays, which is actually not allowed. You're not allowed to give the enemy opposition 
an extra couple of minutes because their 10 minute timer is literally all they have. Yeah, that is, yeah, that's uh, that's why I questioned it uh, as soon as it happened because uh, this is the first, believe it or not, this is the first time this has happened for any any game that I've casted. I know, it's really weird. Like this is something that you don't really see happen whatsoever and it's something that it's come about that, like I, it's nice to see that both teams have come back to this. Like we're going, like both teams are willing to continue. Both teams are trying to, you know, turn this around. But I like that we're seeing a reset from both sides. The inhibitor doesn't go down by HF, by, for HFC. So they still have the ability to try and bring this back. They have caught up in, they have caught up in uh, turret accumulation or turret uh, destroyage. But it looks like we're going to be seeing a play for Baron now. Yeah, people are moving around in that area. We currently have majority of Zero IQ grouped in the mid lane. It looks like they're going to try and make a play onto Critcrat. The stun is not going to connect. Meanwhile, Hecarim ulting in with the Onslaught charge. He's going to have the Sterics Gage procced, and he's not going to be able to continue the chase onto Smarties, who just has too much mobility with that phase rush to get away. Are we staying at this? It looks like I, whoever gets caught out in this fight. Or should I say, in this next couple of minutes, whoever gets caught out is really going to set the tone for this Baron fight and possibly the game ending moment because mid lanes are completely open. Yeah. Uh, it, it, whichever team wins this next fight can probably end the game. The respawn timers are that long. Oh, this is looking really juicy now. Like, both teams are looking to try and, you know, catch each other out. It's interesting that HFC. I forced to actually sit back a little bit more. Ribbon's going back to base. A bit of an eyebrow raising moment. And the rest the first of the mistake. Terrific. Oh, terrific getting caught out by everything. The GA is going to go down, but they are just going to continue pushing in through their backline, popping the Zonyas, and that is going to be a kill on the support. 4 0 IQ, and they might just try and look to go for the Baron in a 4v5, but. Oh, Ribbon no, being caught Dino. out again by the EQ flag and drag combo. Sheremo is going to be able to finish them off, and that is now a 3v5. They're going to try and contest for the Baron. No, they're going to try and go for the inhib and look for the trade to try and stench the flow of blood coming from their base. This looks like this looks like a uh, this looks like a base race almost. Like yes, they take down inhibitor, but now they also have uh, but HFC have Baron buff in response, and they can actually push to take this all the way through i mean yes they get away quite cleanly i look at that there's no wards around they don't know where they are they're just they're running straight up. past them a real unfortunate tick over i mean they could have actually taken them down and forced all the way into base but because of lack of vision in that area they managed to get away quite cleanly so it's a very sneaky move by sneaky and totorific yeah no uh, like yeah they're just trying to slow the advance of HFC, which now has Baron by taking that mid lane in here, creating those super minions pushing in. So at the very least, it's an even push for both uh, minion waves. But uh, unfortunately, Baron does still trump regular minions even with the super. Minions. So that, that is true. Still and in favor of just look HFC. at look at the amount of wards coming out from HFC. Like we're seeing yep. four in the bottom half. Sorry, five in the bottom half. We're seeing two in top with the control ward when they were sitting on Baron. That. If they keep pushing this in, it could be over within the next couple of minutes. Yeah, it absolutely could. And with that Baron buff, they can now effectively siege like they were trying to before. And they can look to try and just take the tower. The mid lane turret has regened quite a bit of health now, so it could survive a couple more hits. That is true. And I'm liking this. Like, we're seeing four members from Zero IQ sitting at their top turret, waiting for HFC to make themselves known. I don't think they know that Javan 4 is sitting in mid, Reddington is sitting bottom. They're trying to make sure they have all pressure applied to make sure Zero IQ do not even leave their baseline. Just like, look at the aggression. This is the pressure that should be applied by Zero IQ to give themselves a bit of leg room, but it's working unfavorably, mainly because of the Baron buff. Yeah, it is currently a 3 1 1 matchup coming out from HFC. The Renekton with. Demolish is going to be able to take down that turret no problem, and that is the first inhibitor turret on the blue side to fall. They are slowly was cracking a... open the base. That was a lot of damage from that single Demolish. I mean, more than half health. Yeah, and that's going to be the mid lane turret now going down, and the top lane turret soon to follow. No inhibitor turrets left. They are going to be able to carry out the siege and take out all the inhibitors. A great Miasmia coming out from Cassiopeia. He's going to get knocked back in. 
by the Fioris is charged from the Hecarim though. Gonna have to flash away. Zillion, oh, not able to get anything done. He's just trying to support the Draven as much as possible. Meanwhile, there's a massive fight happening. Soremo popping off, able to land the Culver Meek. Zonia's coming out from Sneaky Ninja, but it's not gonna be able to do anything. That's going to be a clean ace coming out. Zillion Ultimate, making sure that Soremo does not give away that kill. That is going to be the game going in favor of HFC. Well done. What a huge finisher. Just HFC managed to take away the game by pushing mid lane, bottom lane, and top right inside their right inside zero IQ's baseline. They had no inhibitors, they had no inhibitor turrets left, so all inhibitors were open and easy pickings. Renison takes down bottom with ease while contesting against Dino. He is one tanky little crocodile. And just the catch out in top lane. They got completely ambushed by the reinforcements of Shiro and Exiv from bottom and mid to help clean away the game, box them in, and prevent them from being able to get away, that ultimately they managed to actually take this game in their pocket. Like, they've already settled this game under the bed in their favor. Well done to Hibiki FC for their amazing victory tonight. Yeah, no, and that we are now going to get a look at the damage graphs. And as we can see, uh, surprisingly... Velkos coming out on top four, zero IQ, with that true damage really paying off. And of course, we have Cassiopeia for the red side, followed up by Renekton. No complaints coming from that at damage graphs. No, but it's very interesting that you're seeing the support with the most damage applied from his own team. Normally, you would see the mid lane, the ADC, or the top lane doing something considerable and, you know, topping the charts. But it's nice to see, you know, Sutor taking on Velkos. Getting that true damage on online, maximizing use of any capability that he had. Like he really adapted to his environment. He made sure he had his ulti available for at least two members from the opposition. And it really worked well for their favor for the most part. I mean, they didn't win the game, but the amount of damage output he played for his team, he really did well. He just couldn't help keep his team alive long enough to try and turn it in their favor. And I feel as though the early game really set the tide for the game in favor of HFC, mainly because they kept that lead a majority of the way through. There was probably only one moment, one moment in time that they actually got caught out and were forced to retreat and sit under their own base. But that was mainly because Cassiope had a connection issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. And uh, one of the most bizarre things about this game is Zero IQ for the most, for the majority of the game had the higher kill lead. They had more kills throughout the majority of that entire game purely because of the kill pressure that they had in the bot lane in that uh, early to mid game from those four man roams down to try and take out crit crap. And with that, everybody, that is it from us here at the casting desk. That is it for the meta high school esports league on Tuesday. We will be back again next week. I believe we have a three o'clock and five o'clock segment coming up next week. My name is Reinhardt. I am joined for the final time by Adj. Thank you so much for coming out and watching us, and we'll catch you next time. Is there even such a thing? Ooh, ooh. Can we switch up all the rules? And imagine a utopia. A darling, I'm just so fed up with these expectations. They can weigh me down. My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my life. I want to live inside the upside down. For a minute and pretend. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, whoa. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa, whoa. And if I say you need enough, it gets in green. Inside the upside down For a minute and pray